Welcome back to Retro Wednesday at the Tidarium Hangar. This is Mike, and today I'm going to showcase a display of vintage toy lines. 34 or more different toy lines and how I display these. And it's been six months since I've done an update to this. I've done a lot of changes. I've done a lot of display building. So I'm going to showcase this in here. Hopefully you get some ideas. Hopefully you see some toy lines you've never seen before. Maybe you have seen these and, oh, I didn't know that goes to that toy line. So hopefully it's a lot of fun and we're going to have this fun coming up. So I'm going to start with a quick pan scan of the room. Hopefully it's not too shaky cam. Then we'll go kind of a shelf by shelf, but these shelves are new. I got rid of the old ones, put new ones in, redid all of that. Uh, and there's still some storage over here, which I don't like. And I'm going to try to take my lighting with me on this little pan here of what's going on in the room. Then I'm going to go shelf by shelf here. So, uh, But a lot has happened. I've done a lot of backgrounds put in. I've added some stuff to it. I've actually taken... Some stuff out like we see with the Voltron, as you can tell from the last Voltron video. It's, there's a lot less in there. So I've taken a lot of stuff out and just trying to make it look a little bit neater. Starting a couple of new collections here and there. So there's a whole lot going on and I'm going to share all this with you. So, uh, but that's kind of where we're at now, panning around the room. And we're going to start over here. So looking at these two shelves, uh, kind of got some 90s stuff on the right and the bottom. That's where all the 90s is located in here. Some GoBots and moving up. And we're going to go into each one of these shelves. But starting at the top, I do have the Bionic 6. And Bionic 6 is one of my favorite lines. And I did a couple of different things with this. The first thing I did was I wanted to set up these figures. So, yes, I know I get a lot of criticism for having more than uh, three. But there's... It's more like Bionic 60 than Bionic 6 at this point, I think. Collecting these figures, uh, I did not really keep up with accessories, so it's been really hard getting accessories this day and age. That's been a real challenge. So, uh, yeah, one of my biggest challenges there. But displaying it, I did put some, like, wood, and I painted 2x4s, and then I stacked them cathedral style or theater, theater, theater style. So there it is, and there's the figures. Now, moving over here, I, I started doing with a display. I have some carded stuff, and I have a background in there and all that good stuff. So this was a bit of fun here too. So just kind of working on trying to make it look good. I, I, I took this display straight from the artwork on the packaging. So that was kind of why it's set up like that. A couple of few things I was trying to do at the top here and uh, one of my ladders fell down, but I, a red, I wanted both color, the red and the blue ladder and the red and the blue satellites and then uh, getting over here and I got some chariots and stuff. And see, I had to buy a few chariots to piece together a complete one, and then I found one complete in the box, and I was like, okay, well, you got a complete one in the box, and I guess it's all right. But uh, moving over, I did do some restoration to uh, these quads, so these 4x4s, four and so I, I got six. The goal was to get six good ones that I could put one of each character on, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the motorcycles eventually. I just don't have enough of them, and enough of them that are in good enough shape. It's, it's actually hard to find those. They're so fragile and they break so easy, but I did want to get the base up here. And so I didn't display the base before. It was like crammed on a shelf and now it's displayed. So I like it so much more. So getting down here into RoboCop and this is mostly Kenner, but I got a little bit of the Toy Island mixed in. And Toy Island has two different lines and they actually made it from like 91 to 98 or something like that. They made quite a bit. The big difference between Kenner is Kenner was based off a cartoon and Toy Island really is movie accurate which makes me want to collect that i wanted kenner because it was kenner but then toy island and all the movie accurate stuff that they made makes me kind of be more drawn to that anyway i've got a couple of different shelves here and i will talk about these shelves here in a second uh these are the ones from walmart the 20 30 30 dollar ones but i do have my helicopters i did a restoration video on the helicopter there and uh plan on doing more videos this is the eight inch of the toy island and it's interesting that it talks and does a lot of stuff and then here is the NECA, and the NECA one looks great. People are really after that NECA. I'm glad I got my hands on one before they were like $100 figures. $100 NECA figures, man. It's crazy. I never really thought NECA was going to explode like that, but uh, that's what's going on these days. And then over here, figures. Again, like I'm doing with almost all of these, this is a theater kind of style of setup here. And yeah, I do have a couple of them. This, I'm trying to get all the weapons for all of them, and uh, I think I'm close. The only thing I was missing when I made my video for Kenner was this guy's little uh, 
baton is that what it is anyway i got it now so but looking over here i did some background stuff put in some stuff here uh to make it look at ocp and yeah just what what makes it look good this is the unreleased all the pictures that i used in my video for the unreleased so that's that stuff there and i do want to showcase I'm going to do a video for this. Uh, also, if there's anything that you see and you, you're like, hey, I'd love to see you make a video of that first or next, I can bump it up on the schedule there. But uh, this looks more like, uh, this is a Mustang and there's a Taurus, but it still looks closer than what the Robo one or whatever that they made for Kenner. So anyway, getting down here to the next one, this is my Beast Wars. Okay, now I'm kind of mixing it. It's 96. I don't really count it as vintage. I count the cutoff at 95. But of course, it's all based on your age, what you consider vintage. Now, I might not keep this in here. I might move it. That's why I haven't put anything in the background. And with the Walmart ones versus the Target shelves, the Walmart shelves, if you put some double-sided tape and you tape stuff up on this and you pull it off, it leaves a big old white mark where the where the paper ripped. And I don't like that. Now, the Target ones don't do that, or at least the shorter Target ones that I have don't do that. So uh, the Target was out of stock. But you get what you pay for. They're six bucks more at Target. They're like a quarter of an inch smaller and they're definitely worth it. So what I'm doing in this here is I have a mixture of masterpiece and I have regular stuff going on and I'm not a huge Beast Wars fan, but I appreciate Beast Wars for what it is. And so that's why I've got these and I love this display. That's why it hasn't moved out of here just yet. So right below that we have Inspector Gadget. Let me try to set this up. I'm going to lower the tripod a bit. Okay, there we go. I want to try to eliminate shaky cam as much as possible. It's not going to be possible to eliminate it 100%, especially with what's going on in this room. But here we go. Now, there's a couple things going on on this shelf, and I don't have my Blitzway in here. I haven't even opened the Blitzway one yet, which I talked about. I do look forward to opening that one day and getting into it. But this is Tiger Electronics. Yeah, Tiger Electronics that made that those really gimpy game systems that uh, were silly. But we all know them, and we remember them, and probably had 10 of them or something. But uh, they made this toy line in 1993. It was a bit of a failure because the cartoon came out in 1983 and by the time the toys came out, I don't think there were a whole lot of huge fans, so it didn't sell well. And I don't even remember seeing it on the toy aisle, but uh, for free, you don't have to pay anything. You get to see the, the face of Dr. Claw. This was uh, 93, but it's an 80s franchise. Oh my gosh, it's bright. Well, I guess you don't get to see his face. <laughs> anyway. Uh, still, these figures uh, don't have much articulation, there's not much to them, but I'll probably do a video on them one day. Okay, down right below that, this is my aliens section. And then this is another flaw in these shelves from Walmart, which, which I would have known this before I bought them, but uh, they don't have holes all the way through. So I think the holes stop here and then start back up up here somewhere. So you only have so many, uh, well, I think it starts back up here and it stops. Anyway, you only have so many places you can put a shelf. Uh, and, and, and for that example, it's right there. So maybe you can learn something, get the target shelves, they're way better. Uh, look at all that space that there's no holes and you can't, you don't have any options for putting shelves. So with this, uh, going to the aliens, uh, it's much bigger display than I originally wanted it to be. So the joy toy in there, there's still plenty of space with the joy toy and all that, but it looks great. I mean, by the time it was done, I'm happy with it. And you can see it better because the shelf's so much higher. The shelf should have actually gone down to here. So you probably wouldn't have had as good of a view of it. But so I got this uh, lot from my buddy for a hundred bucks. I bought his collection and it was pretty close to a complete collection of the Kinner run. And then I added NECA and then I added some of the stuff. That's a $10 one. The blue one over there is a $10 blue one from Walmart, a $5 blue one from or gold one from Walmart. And I like all the little accessories that you were getting with these modern ones like this thing here it's really cool so i'm going to do a video on these well i did a video on them already sort of but i haven't done a full-blown video maybe one day but it's kind of low on the priorities right now so we're not really going to talk about it so much but at the very bottom i've got a small dino riders another buddy of mine's like hey dude i got these dino riders do you want them and i said sure you know he's like 150 bucks just take a big old collection here um i've got more downstairs that i'm still trying to match up i don't really don't know what goes with what so it's one of those i don't know kind of toy lines so here is the gobots i'm gonna back it out just a bit so here we go with the gobots and basically what i did when i put these shelves up i moved the gobots from another place because i wanted more like kinds of displays and so this whole shelf is made up of different sizes and shapes and styles of displays and so i think it looks better and when we get over to the other side you're going to see what i'm talking about very similar types of shelves so anyway i put some pictures behind it and on the sides of it just 
it's GoBots. Like, what are you going to put for GoBots? I had a whole slew of different pictures, options, and that's what I went with. Now, this is two bases side by side, and I had the power suits in there, and I kept screwing up, and I kept needing to get the, the black guns, and I kept, every time guns popped up, and they were red, and I bought them. So I was like, oh man I, I did it again another set of red guns i need the black guns so but so i got the extras it, it was fine with me because i really enjoy uh having a couple of extra accessories just to kind of uh pimp them out a little bit so looking with this here there's a lot of fun things with the toy line for gobots first they're small they don't take up a huge amount of space and the other thing is that there's a lot of them but i think there's only like 54 uh, there's some recolors and all that stuff. So I'm going to have to get after really dialing this out. But for now, I think it looks good. I'm happy with it. Uh, it's too tight of space to open the lid on that, like the, the open the front of that to reveal the face. And I got to figure out a way to like prop it up or something. But let's get on to the next one. Spiral Zone. So I thought Silverhawks was hard to collect. And it's, it's actually not hard to collect. You can get anything for Silverhawks any day of the week, more or less, if you try. Yeah, and for Silver Rocks, if you have the money, you can have whatever you want. When it comes to Spiral Zone, not everything's available. Like, you literally have to wait three, five, six months for certain things to show up. And when they do, it's it's a serious challenge to get them. You, if you're the first one, uh, that's how I got most of this. I was the first person. I bought it right away. I made an offer, got it, whatever. Uh, other than that, I just, I couldn't, I can't hang in the bidding wars, man. Like, going up to $400 for one figure or something. Uh, they're not worth 400. They're worth about hundred dollars a piece sealed and about 50 uh, loose and so I, that's what I've gotten them for That's what they're worth and that's what I paid But when you see all these <laughs> these crazy auctions that have been going on it blows my mind What's been going on with them? But anyway, I still got a lot of parts and pieces to complete these This is a lot of fun and I'm eventually gonna do a video about these All right moving over here to Centurions. This is a fun toy line and I pretty much cold stopped on it because I got enough but I still need some parts and pieces, so I still look at it every day. Just if there's one or two pieces that I need, I buy it. That's that. That's that simple. Uh, if there, sometimes you have to buy like a whole suit to get the two or three pieces you need, and then try to resell that suit with missing those pieces. Uh, it, it's it's a pain, but that's kind of the process. Now I'm gonna put the ramen toys. Uh, well, let's 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 show how I'm gonna do that. So what I'm gonna do here with the ramen toys is I'm gonna have a. Uh, a max here. I'm gonna move some stuff around a bit, but a max here, and then I'm gonna have Ace here, and then I'm gonna have. I've already got a spot for Jake right there. And what I did was I broke these shelves up to have uh, all of Jake's weapon systems at the bottom. I tried to group the doubles that I had, and then moving up we have the uh, Ace, and then we have, my, as you can see right there, we got Max and stuff. So that's how I did it. We also have the bad guys right above that, and I wanted them all just on a straight shelf, and so. That really works. Also up top, I only have a few boxes. I don't have a lot of boxes. And I have uh, some weapon systems that are, uh, well, not all of them are complete. So, of course, I'm trying to complete them. But I, I don't need to do much more past this. This is a lot of fun. But of my favorite ones, I always want to have a couple of extras. And uh, I'll use them for trades because I, I actually traded some stuff to a buddy of mine for a different toy line. All right, so this area here, uh, I have some Captain Power, there's the base and all that. And then that's a lot of storage. And that storage is an eyesore to me, it bothers me. It doesn't bother me so much until I start doing a video like this and then I'm like, why don't I find a place to repurpose it? But like, I don't know if you realize just how expensive some of these things are just high dollar. The NECA is not really all that high dollar, but uh, it just was here, it fits in it. I thought it would look neater than that stacked in there, but I gotta maybe reorganize it, make it look a little neater. But some of that stuff is hard to get. And uh, some of the stuff I just like, like these, these power dashers. I just like having a set of power dashers. It's um, that's pretty cool. Okay, so let's get into Captain Power, what I'm doing with it. And I've got the base on the floor here. And I don't actually have all the guns on it because I don't want to accidentally bump it with my foot or something as I'm going by. This is like future work. I got another one of these and I got to part together my best of my best of my best. Because I have some broken parts and broken pieces. And so I want to get my best of my best of my best. And have only that one on display and then put the rest of them in storage. But... Again, I just haven't had time, so, and it, it doesn't really look, well, it looks kind of junky. I'm not going to lie. It's starting to look junky in this little corner here. So, uh, Sky Bike Launcher is awesome. It's hard to get. I've got a box one, and i got the, uh, a couple of these other boxed, like, European things. Uh, I had some friends overseas uh, help me get it. Uh, well, let, let me just be straight up. i got one friend uh, in the UK that's into it, and he helped me drastically. 
a uh, few things. This walker, is, it sucks. I had it walking and then it stopped walking, then I had it walking again. But uh, yeah, that thing sucks. It's cool in, in idea and I wish it would work, but it doesn't work. The I took it apart and it's it's ridiculous engineering inside. It's not good engineering. So anyway, getting into this. Uh, so here's the figures. Now here's the problem with this toy line. There are two figures I don't have because they're they're considered so rare that they're prototypes, but they're actually released. And I don't have them. And I'll pick up, if somebody somewhere should make like a 3D printed version or something, or I don't know, somehow make it, make them out of resin for all I care. And I'd like to get a few of those. But um, they're they're basically the soldiers for the bad guys. Uh, this Sergeant uh, Torpedo Johnson or something like that. And then the Tritor. Those are the hardest ones to get. That's why I don't have very many of them, but I got like a ton of the rest of them. So uh, I use them in displays up here. So we have the displays up here. That's a lot of fun. I think I'm, I actually kind of pulled them out and put them in other displays and did some other stuff with them. But anyway, there we go. And that's a lot of fun. The thing is they're shiny and right next to them. Well, what's the shiniest toy line? Probably Silverhawks, right? So I got them right next to them. And I think that's a good place and a good way to store it. And then of course, Another shiny one, we have a relatively shiny one right here. So we've got the Sectars. So looking at this, uh, space starts to become an issue. And so when you're filming, lighting becomes an issue. So up here, I've got uh, the Mirage and uh, a few other things, maybe like an extra figure. I, I threw my beat up figures in the cockpits and stuff. So uh, it just looks like there's figures in there. Well, they are, but they were really, really garbage figures. and. Here we go. I got a little bit of a silver hawk sign behind them and I have them all kind of on that whole theater style seating theater seating setup and their theater standing and I think this looks great uh, for me it's exactly what I wanted but I, I couldn't pull off one of the effects there's one effect I wanted was to have Monstar and represent both of his heads and wind hammer there is covering the other one's head so I specifically went on my way to get two of those so that I could show both heads and there we go. Another thing that you're going to start seeing in my collection is I like bootlegs simply because I want to offset the collection. They only made so many a finite number and I think the bootlegs are pretty cool. So jumping over here, I'm going to jump to the sectars. Then I'm going to show what I got going on with Thundercats and then a few other things. So anyway, these are really cool. I never had them as a kid. I didn't really know much about them, but when I was collecting a Rambo, I realized that like some of these showed up in Rambo lots and they're the same company made them and the same sort of build and the same size. And then I realized there's only like nine figures or something like that. And there's, I don't know, just a handful of the puppets. So I went after it and I was like, this is a lot of fun. I still don't know a hundred percent if I've got everything, but it's still fun to collect. Uh, I, I get the wings on the little ones is tough. I do have, a uh a base over here and with that I've, I've got the birds and all that let's shine some light on the situation the bugs they're not birds they're bugs uh, so i got a few of them it's just kind of fun uh fun toy line and for the background i guess they had these little comics that were included and those look really good for background artwork so down below that you're gonna see some thundercats now the thing about thundercats is that they're big and they take up a lot of space. So I kind of did the whole elevated steps up uh, in here to cram them all in there. And I think it looks good, but it, it does look a little bit cluttered. Down below it, we got more of the bad guys and some of the doubles and stuff, but with the base. Now, I don't really know where I would display the cat slayer and I don't know where, well, I wouldn't want to spend a grand or 12 or 15 or whatever that's on those things. These are the miniatures down here and I, I kind of I actually thought that base was going to be a lot bigger and I could like, oh yeah, I got one of these, but this is really small. The um, cat slayer would probably come up to here, the, the actual full size one. And then I know it's not, I know it's modern, but I have the modern uh, Thundercats. I don't know how far I'm going to go with that and maybe I'm going to repurpose that shelf to something, but still that's kind of what I got going on with Thundercats. So this corner of the collection starts to get real fun. So I'm going to move a few things around so I can access it really well. But uh, over here we got a bunch of different toy lines mixed together. And uh, most of them have their own shelf. So we'll get right into it. 
All right, so here we go with the A-Team. I have done a video about the A-Team. And again, if you see any of these toy lines, you say, hey, that'd be a great video. I'd like to see more about that. Then I'll do that one, bump it up on the roster. But anyway, uh, setting them up like this. Here's how I display them. I have the six inch ones in the back. And then I've got two two by fours painted black and I stacked the van on it. It's an Earl plastic van. And then I have a few extra figures back here hiding out in the back. I got some extra accessories and stuff for them. And then I've got uh, the bad guys grouped over here. And then I have the small uh, 3.75 fig inch figures in the front with no accessories because uh, their accessories are stupid. <laughs> I just wanted to have a representation of them. But I got their accessories even though they're really goofy. And I think it looks better just showing the figure. So you can kind of cram it all on one shelf. And then there's some other stuff up here. And I don't even think I showed all this other stuff in the video. Showed some of it. Maybe I didn't show it all, but it's storage, but semi displayed in a way. So down below that, let's see if I can get a better angle on all this. Uh, I've got the Chuck Norris and the Karate Commandos. I'm going to go shaky cam on it then. So here's the thing. Uh, this toy line is well, probably the easiest and cheapest to collect. There's just so much of it out there. It's really cheap. It's easy to get your hands on it. You can get probably every figure with most of the accessories for under 200 bucks. Now, here's the thing. I have doubles of them. Uh, we've got Knight Rider in there. Michael, uh, he doesn't have a car to drive or to sit in or anything. So he's just going to be, you know, riding pasture there. And I did put in, this is, a, I don't know what it is. Is it Diamond Select or whatever company made a Bruce Lee recently at Walgreens? And he was like 17 bucks. Now, the thing is, Chuck Norris went up against uh, Bruce Lee in his first movie. So, I think that's kind of fun to to see that. So, And uh, I want to talk about the recolor Super Ninja back here. They're, they're pretty hard to get, but they show up. They're fragile, and their legs break real easy. So, uh, make sure that you're, if you ever buy one, that the seller bubble wraps that thing really good. But as for the rest of them, they're, they're pretty fun. It's a good toy line. I like it. I put a little background behind it. And I've already done a video on this, so let's move on to the next ones. So this may sound stupid, but I'm really proud of how well this came out down here. Uh, with the mat, like a picture of the mat, and a, some Cobra Kai modern and old versions. And then kind of just showing, well, since they really only made a handful of characters and remade them over and over and over and over. So we show uh, Johnny and Daniel on the mat. we got the referee. We've got... Uh, all the bad guys chilling back there watching and then we got some stuff going on over here cobra kai really did kick this off and make this toy line really expensive and hard to collect and it was much harder to collect than i thought much more expensive than i thought i thought oh that'd be pretty easy and then no it wasn't and i don't have everything and i don't really care to go after everything i think i got enough to make one shelf look good and i'm happy so moving on up to the john black star which eventually i'm going to make a video about black star there but i do have a print that says black star behind it all this is of course my theater style standing there and with this i did try to kind of group the bad guys in the back and then swoop around to the good guys in the front and uh, group like kinds together this toy line has some weird stuff a lot of the figures got remade with the uh sparker gimmick in it uh kind of like we saw with some of the transformers that had sparkers like the the uh Oh, is it Fangry? Did Fangry have a sparker? One of them had a sparker in it that was a vintage. Uh, several of them did, actually. I've got one. I just can't remember the character that actually had it. But then we have all these little demon monsters and then Trobits and stuff. And I, I don't have the gross mirror, so... And I don't have all the crazy vehicles and stuff. So I don't know. I didn't know how far I'd go with this, but I might go a little deeper into it. It's a fun toy line. It is super old. But to me, I think these figures look better and are better than... He-Man build, but the show He-Man, the Masters Universe show, is so much better than the Black Star show. So it's kind of a catch-22. So we're gonna get into shaky cam here a bit more, and I do need to uh, have more control of the camera so we can see. Uh, first off, uh, Supernaturals. As I, I'm gonna say that I thought that they were kind of silly because of the fact that just the way these are super cheaped out on for toys. The bigger ones are a lot cooler they do look a lot better but overall on a shelf displayed even the small ones look good the ghostlings with they, they actually have such a big surface area of hologram 
it looks good displayed. And if you can capture the light and get it all in the same frame, I'm trying to do all of it lit up at the same time, it's hard to do, but it makes for a nice looking shelf and a very nice effect. And since holograms are almost dead, it's nice to pick these up. It was it was a lot of fun to grab these. And not a very expensive toy line. It's a pretty cheap toy line. Uh, unless you start getting into like all the cars and all that weird stuff. So I don't suggest <laughs> go that deep. Play sets. Uh, I've seen it go for like 70 almost complete. So anyway, uh, Galaxy Rangers is something I would suggest stay away from. <laughs> stay away. <laughs> stay away. They're expensive. But since you can get reproduction hats and guns and stuff uh, for pretty cheap. They're like 10 euro each or something like that uh 10 euro for three guns 10 euro for one hat so i do have some official and some reproduction and i just don't care uh they they look good and i'm done <laughs> so peace out but I, I did put in a background here and a background there and they do have the theater style standing so next up we're going to look at rambo and getting it all in the shot is hard it's just such a big figure and a big vehicles and just big for a toy line and big base and i've been sliding the base back and forth kind of get it out of my way so i can do stuff and then i, I store it right in front of it and it looks good but no, man this uh this uh base is big it's tall and all this is going on we're going to get a closer look at everything kind of shelf by shelf here so i guess we'll just start here at the bottom and work our way up let me get a little bit more light on the situation there that's better so Looking at this, uh, I have a, a few of each vehicle, and uh, what I'm doing here is I've accumulated a couple of extras along the way and tried to complete them because I'm going to go after all the recolor variations as they pop up. I'm guessing that if I do grab a recolored variation of any of these vehicles, they're probably not going to have parts. So I'm going to just strip the parts off one of these and plug in the recolor variation. And that's my plan, and it's probably a 10-year plan. It's going to take me 10 years, maybe 15 years who knows, will I still be collecting in 15 years? Guaranteed. So uh, moving on up the situation here, uh, we've got some Rambos, we've got uh, some other characters. And so kind of what I did is just kind of group them uh, by, you know, uh, by character, good guys and bad guys, and then series. So that's what I did with that. And there's kind of little displays as we go. Then this shelf over here is more or less the uh, White Dragon Ninja shelf and so that's a lot of fun i like the white dragon ninja shelf and it's kind of like a little storm shadow army and that's that's kind of fun there now i did whiten a couple of those with the whitening process that i've shown in the past videos and so it is successful to a point but you can fade the paint if you leave it in too long so i only you know leave it in for a few hours pull it and don't want to mess up the paint so moving over here uh one thing about this toy line, which I've already done a video about it, but I haven't done the Series 2 video, and that's coming up because I don't have them all complete yet. And so the Series 2 eventually, but completing these, I didn't realize how many parts and pieces they have. It's like a like an old G.I. Joe figure, but except bigger. But I think they, they have more parts than the average G.I. Joe figure. Just crazy amounts of parts. Getting up here to uh, Series 2 shelf. So this is kind of fun, the Series 2 shelf. Uh, these are harder to get figures, and some of them aren't complete. Some of them are in rough shape. Some of them are in good shape. And so uh, just going after them, I tried to get a couple of each. or Actually, I just tried to get whichever ones I get my hands on, and that's all there was to it. And yeah, we have to buy more than one to get the parts to complete it. Or you buy them complete, and they're like ridiculously expensive. So uh, that's kind of how I go. Uh, doing whatever I can to get them as cheap as I can. Getting up here, we got some cycles. That's like a little scene right there, and I, I doubled up on some figures for it. And down here, we've got a few more figures, and I'm trying to get them completed. Uh, just, uh, they got come with so many accessories. It's crazy to display them with all their accessories. It's it's insane. I'm trying to capture what I got going on, on this shelf. It's gonna be a little bit harder now. I've got background with just the Rambo, and then I got another Rambo, a different Rambo for the lower part here. And then I've got, um, this figure right here is on spiral zone vehicles the bull whip the bull whip and the thing about the bull whip is it was also doubled or reissued in the joxka joxa line as um as another vehicle i think they called it the eight by eight and so with that it deserves to be in this kind of uh de desert um uh, brigade section so it was would have been a desert brigade vehicle in the overseas in the argentina line so i do have a few of these argentina figures and 
tracking down the rest is going to be killer and it's going to be brutal on the wallet and it's going to be a long long term uh project that may never be completed also neca rambo and i tried I, I, last year um uh, i think it took six or seven different auctions that started at like a dollar and uh to get one for 50 bucks and so finally i got one and it was i was up all night anyway and i was like oh hey this auction's ending let me get it and i got it for 50 bucks but nowadays i mean getting one of these for 50 bucks is hard so i haven't opened it i figured i'll come across a loose one maybe another loose one for 50 i'd be all over that but i don't think it looks that good i, I actually don't think neck did a great job with him he's okay but i don't think he's great so next up is voltron here we are with voltron and it looks really good uh i changed this show i changed them all but this is where i'm going to put my uh blitzway and so changing it all up i did a little, a little bit more down here kind of reorganizing stuff right down here for the panache place area last year i went through like a ton of play sets i, I got a lot of play sets i reviewed a lot of play sets but uh picking up this castle i actually doubled up on the internal accessories because there's ports for them and there's places to put it so that was fun i'm glad i did last year this year i'm not finding hardly any good deals on accessories for this at all and i actually was there's one more i was looking for i just haven't seen it yet now i've been talking about how i get these two by fours i paint them black because well it's a one dollar spray paint can it's easy and uh, cheap and it looks good and so this is a brown paint and i tried to get the paint that would match the shelf the kind of the oak color as close as possible and i just do the same technique I just paint them brown. Now I was going through the process of staining. Staining takes a long time. Painting is, the paint's actually usually dry in like an hour, but I let it dry for 24 hours before I put any uh, collectibles on it. I don't want to get any paint onto the figures and all that stuff. So that's kind of what I'm doing there. And I put in some pictures, like a little Voltron and a Voltron there. Now next up I've got a mess. I mean, I've always got things going on and I'll admit when I've got a mess and I'm not done here and I don't really know what I'm gonna do, but I found some cheap Pee Wee Herman stuff. So I was like, well, it was cheap. I, I didn't even know they made it. And I was like, I just think it's cool. It's cheap, let me grab it. Uh, looking online, the stuff costs way more, way more online than I grabbed this stuff for. And But but there's my Boulder Hill and uh, really out of the whole room, that's the best place I could come up with putting it because it hangs over the edge and all that stuff but it looks pretty good i got little scenes going on and and that's another good reason to have more than one vehicle so you can deck out your scenes and make it look uh quite interesting let's get into some brave star so i'll be honest i haven't done much with brave star it's still about the same as it was last time in the last video that i made and i think that it's a fun toy line i think it displays well i think the figures look amazing just stand there on the shelf so uh what i've done since then i think i got another one of those silver mules because it's just so much fun but they should have released that by itself but, like people really want a silver mule because it was in the show and everybody rode those in the show but yet you have to buy the most expensive vehicle with the strata coach to get one that's ridiculous uh, up here 30 30 uh, I, I think I'm going to have to make a funny joking video about how every 3030 that pops up on eBay has something broken. So it's it's like a funny uh, joke. It might be a meme soon, but everyone, like I've seen everything on this thing broken. The the nose broken off, the mane broken off, the neck broken off, the the legs are always broken, the tail broken off a lot of the time, the, the whole rear end, he's like blew his rear out. That's crazy. So anyhow, uh, it's kind of fun up here. I've got, when I made that video for Brave Star, there's the extra Fort Carrion parts just kind of chilling up there. So not really a display. That could have been a display. This is Dune. This will be a quick, easy one. I've done nothing with Dune. This is my humble beginnings. So uh, yeah, that's future space. Here is uh the kinder superpowers and that was another fun line to collect really hard to collect the only thing i think i've done and i don't even know if uh i don't think i've done anything with this the only thing i've really added to this since i've made my videos about it was this guy and the rest uh I, i've that's it <laughs> it's just crazy uh the stuff's too, getting too expensive and hard to find and there's really only one figure left that i need and about six accessories and weapons but but uh, it's, I don't know, it's not worth the money that people are asking. S speaking of not worth the money that people are asking, in humanoids, it is a fun, cool toy line. I, as a kid, I had one of the trees, the darker brown tree. Oh, the camera kicked off. I don't exactly know why. 
Okay, so here we go with the in humanoids, and as I was saying, I had that brown tree when I was a kid, but collecting these, it's not really that hard. There's not much to it. There's the big ones, and then a couple of different, uh, I guess, bad guy ones, and then four good guys, two vehicles. I didn't go after the vehicles, simply because I think the vehicles, I don't know. I, I don't know how I display them. I, I didn't even see a point to it, but they look goofy and they look really cheaply made. But I put some other stuff in here. This is like uh, Chris Star and I'm not sure what that guy's from, but kind of looks like it fits in the same world. World of magic. Yeah, sort of. Let's move down here to Power Lords. Okay, so Power Lords. So what I did, I actually, I had all this set up just like this. And then I moved it to another shelf and it, the other shelf didn't fit it very well. So I moved it all back. It's crazy. But anyway, I do have, I think, the whole run of the comic book back there, which is one of the things I like to do is put comic books in. And I just made some pictures of Power Lord and put it in there. I mean, I just really don't know much about the toy line. I, I, there's no show or anything. But the toy line is awesome. It really is awesome. It's got a lot of articulation for the early 80s. Uh, interesting accessories. I don't have all the accessories. I don't have all the vehicles. Uh, there's one here. I need to, in, I, I need to put that into it. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about, I was thinking about like letting it be all this, be Power Lord. Then I was like, well, maybe I'll do Dune. Uh, so still a lot of work going on for the future. So let's move on down here to Visionaries. Now, I, when I set up the Visionaries one, I had like pictures and stuff all over this but i also had it as i didn't know what accessories went with the figures and all that so i had pictures of that in here too and they are still in the very back i think in way in the back you can still see i got the pictures of of those in the back there but uh, a couple of interesting things there's a lot of variations with these like uh if you can see the Recon has two different uh chest pieces and i trust me i did not go after the two different chest piece variations at all I was a little upset when that one arrived and I was like, that's not right. And then I did some research and I'm like, yeah, okay. So it, it's a normal thing for him to have Feral's chest piece instead of the lizard. Uh, dagger of salt. Um, that's, I, I bought that one first. Like that was the first thing I got was the dagger of salt. I was like, well, if I can start with the hardest, then I'll continue going. And I did continue going. And here we go with the good guys. Good guys, a lot of fun. So there it is. Uh, I do have a couple of each. I do have a few uh, things going on. I was trying to uh, do some customs and let's get down here. And sorry about the shaky cam. And as you can see, there's a picture of them all behind it. And the custom of uh, the wizard and the two ladies and all that stuff. So yeah, fun cartoon to watch too. And, and I didn't really collect much of this. This SDCC one is going through the roof on the price. Like, I can't believe how expensive that thing's getting. Because I was seeing them for like 25 to 30 bucks. Now they're like 60. Uh, I mean, you can still grab one for 40 if you're there at the right time. And then down here, I got a box and I got storage of extra junk for the toy line. Kind of funny. So, next up, uh, again, I've done videos on mask, got a ton of mask stuff. Uh, I have gotten rid of some mass stuff, traded some off, sold some, uh, so I could clear up space for the cops. And so looking, I'm just going to show the bottom of the mask and we look at the rest of it. Uh, I'm covering up some of my mask display with this VR box. I'm going to open it up and put it on the shelf. I just haven't got to it yet. So it's in the way, but I want to say that, uh, laser command, I thought it was the dumbest thing ever when I first got it and I just never messed with it and I just put it on the shelf and I was like, this is a, just a, a hunk of junk. And then I finally saw a video of how it's supposed to work and I was like, oh wow, I never knew that's how it worked. And so I got mine to work and I was like, oh, well, this is a really awesome toy now. So really wish I would have jumped on it earlier, but uh, they, the longer you wait on that thing, the more expensive it got. But let's get into the cops. I have the good guys here, bad guys there. And I'm gonna start with the, good, the, the bad guys. So one of these, things I like to do is put comic books behind stuff. I'm not a comic book collector myself, but I do like having comic books behind my displays, use them as artwork, and I still do it to this day. And so with the Cops of Crook, it's no different. Now I had everything, the whole toy line crammed on one shelf and it looked crammed. And I was like, you know, I've got to free up some more space and put them on two shelves. So this shelf looks amazing because here's why it looks amazing. It has open space. 
And yeah, I could do the whole theater kind of standing and just have them all standing there like that. But it's not going to look good because you have vehicles you have to integrate. And there are, I think, nine vehicles. So I have all nine vehicles integrated in the displays. Uh, maybe not the best. Uh, like, these guys are just chilling up here. But uh, that's how I did it. So uh, let's look at the cops. Now, these guys are still crammed in here. I, I do have, I started with issue number one and worked it way around. And then, like, this is issue six. And then, then the other ones finish out over there. But um, I've got the vehicles with trying to get as many characters interacting with the vehicles as possible and that's kind of how I went with this and then I was like well I've got a driver in the seat but if I have an extra driver they'll be on the outside so it can showcase because you can't really see them while they're in their vehicle and all of that good stuff so it, it's kind of a fun it's a really fun toy line I'm about to do one of these pretty soon I need a few pieces I'm still missing like a couple of weapons a gun here and there uh, so but, but I'm like 90 percent there but it really kind of bothers me that I thought I had them all complete, and then I find out, oh, it needs another part. That's kind of frustrating, but uh, also with this motorcycle here, uh, the Blue Streak motorcycle, it is actually a pretty cheap one. So having multiples is kind of fun, cheap and easy, but then it starts taking up all this space. I'm going to try to angle this to reduce the glare as much as I can, but just more mask. And the thing about mask is you can make displays, really amazing displays, or you can do what I'm doing and just kind of having them in there in rows, just like crazy. And so that's kind of how I've always had it done. And I like it. I actually kind of like the look of it. And uh, it's just fun to look at it like this. But there's most people would display mask maybe. Uh, I don't have anything behind it. But maybe they'd have it in the action mode. Like they're in little scenes fighting. Uh, maybe reenact what they had on some of these uh, brochures and stuff like that. But uh, I've kind of grouped by vehicle. Uh, try, I, I don't know. I was trying to keep them by series. But really it's about size. When I display these, it's what's going to fit in the space adequately and what's not going to fit in the space. And so, and, and there's storage and I use all this for like extra storage and some of the other toy lines kind of carry into it. It's just how it goes. One of the things that I've never really did and lately I've been getting into it, but I'm, I'm I dipped a toe in and I pulled it out real fast. If, because it's so expensive, it's the European releases, and this stuff is so expensive. Even my buddies that are selling and trading and stuff, it's like they everyone thinks that's the most expensive stuff in the toy line is the European releases, I guess. But uh, anyway, it's kind of fun. I would love to see like upgraded versions, especially a T-Bob. I know somebody makes one, and I probably need to try to track one of those down. I got a few boxed items up here, and I put the airplanes up here, and. Uh, I bought a kit, and I might do a video about that, a kit that fixes uh, the problem with the wings on the switchblades. So uh, I, I gotta test it out and see if it, how well it works. And there's just extra parts and pieces up here too. Vortec, boxed Vortec up here. And I'm glad I bought it when I did. This light's just in the way. I'm glad I bought Vortec when I did because it's so expensive now because it's just, it's just really rare. It's not highly sought after. And speaking of Vortec, Vortec's not highly sought after but it's expensive because there's not much in the market. Uh, KB got it, and I remember getting mad that you're knocking off masks, and I love masks, so why, what are you doing with my mask? And um, you know, some extra uh, suits and stuff, like it got fun putting together a bunch of those. But anyway, let's go look at the G.I. Joe collection. So with all the stuff that I'm doing here, my son wanted to get in and do pretty much the same thing. So uh, we've been working on his shelf here. He's He's done a really good job with it. I'm really proud of what he's got going on. And we'll get, we got more shelves to do just like this. And so a lot of fun. He does Star Wars Black Series and Marvel Legends and just kind of a pretty much whatever else that he's into. But uh, it's kind of fun to have an influence on the kids like this. And my other son is into lighting big time. So he's done himself up a nice little shelf here. He also likes the Roblox and all that. So yeah, he's... He's, it's a fun little shelf. He did a great job with it. I love it. This is a vintage kind of a video. It's all about vintage. But before I get into that, I got this is my movie theater. So this is the screen up here. And there's the, the AC to get into the movie theater. Uh, I put in these shelves. And I think I showed it in the last one. But a couple of updates. I think having uh, Star Wars and other movie lines and stuff, modern fit really well here but uh the movie theater room is, is a really good place because you got space that's where i put my my flag 
and and you're gonna see in a minute why so the flag is over here and uh, this is not lit up just yet I'll add the lighting to it in a second but I have a couple other shelves and a few things to look at on the way to the flag so here's my small Ghostbuster section and I've added a handful of these expensive little suckers of the filmation I don't know how far I'm gonna go with filmation because that stuff's just too expensive uh, I just can't I can't spend fifty dollars a figure on those I just don't think they're worth it but they look nice uh, if I get more I'll add more space to it but uh, I've got the plasma collection in here it's not vintage but mixed into it is some vintage stuff and it just so happens that today they shipped out my vintage collection uh, version of the Ecto-1 got some ghosts and stuff in there not much going on uh, my buddy sold me this firehouse it's like a shell wait this one down here I got both the firehouses 10 bucks a piece so uh, not much going on with all of that but anyway it's still kind of fun and I look forward to the new Ghostbusters movie here I have cell barge not much has happened with it you know that's how I like to build a display I'm happy with it and don't do anything to it uh, it's, it doesn't have to be organic I did do a little stuff here uh, measuring tape oh, that measuring tape is left behind from the flag project I'm sure because I had a lot of measuring going on with that and that's an antenna to Joe vehicle or something but uh, I like the sand dunes and all this and I, I like what I did here and added the sarlacc pit I don't know that thing just I found it somewhere for like nothing do you want to talk about the uh, addition since the last video is this uh, Jabba uh, Jabba Palace playset that we got from Walmart they went on clearance for uh, I think they were 22 bucks when I bought this one and then they got to 13 and I bought a couple so I have a couple more and then they went to nine I got one of them at nine so uh, my I might redo all of this with these but just using those accent pieces with the uh, already cardboard printout is nice and down here I got a mess this this is just all kind of just extra junk uh, I had to buy two play sets to piece one together that's just how it goes and I used them in the video and I haven't uh, stored it away just yet uh, <laughs> for the bionic six but when HasLab comes out I'm gonna have this shelf ready to go Okay, so I want to say right now, G.I. Joe is hot, and with G.I. Joe being so hot, everybody is wanting to, well, fill out a G.I. Joe collection, whether it's going to be classified or retro or just vintage, and the flag is everyone's holy grail, which I don't want to downplay the flag, but at the, after all the time, effort, and money that I put into it, it's like everyone says, um, Michael French at Retro Blasting definitely says it, it's a $2,000 toy table but it looks magnificent. Now I've had several in the past, had a had almost complete one, then I had like a 50% complete one, but I got rid of all of them because I just didn't have a place to display. Now I'm displaying it here, and my wife said, uh, we're not even gonna talk about what you did to the movie theater room. Uh, I'm not happy. <laughs> so what's done is done, right? So anyway, there it is. I put some lighting to it. Uh, I will, if enough people want, I can do a, a video about it. I have pictures of like kind of every step of the way. And, uh, well, not every step, a few steps of the way, but I can talk about it and show some things, but I put some lighting to it. I did put my Jojo Classified right here in the flag. So that's how I did my setup. And then while I was doing the base, like everyone else did, they did some plywood and then uh, some two by fours and just kind of mirrored the way the support struts go. And uh, I did that. And then I've got the, uh, uh, the whales down there, a few other things. One, one thing I'll point out is I've had several flags. This isn't my first and hopefully it's my last. <laughs> but uh, with this having several flags, I never use the clips. Everyone talks about the clips are necessary and important. And, and this thing is sitting perfectly flat. Every seam is flat. Especially because you've got it built on a perfectly flat surface. Perfectly flat because you're starting with a 2x4 or not 2x4 but plywood and 2x4s on it. So it's perfectly flat. I've never, ever, ever used clips. Uh, they break too easy. What a waste of time and money on clips. I have them, but I just don't use them. Anyway, getting down to this, uh, what I did with the base, I wanted it to look like grass, so I got a lot more grass. And then this base was a little too big and it overhung, so I had to put the grass over the support beam, and so now it looks all broken up and weird. But still, I did the same kind of concept as, a, as we do with the flag and everyone else does with the flag uh, with that extra lower base and I made a lower section here. Now that I'm looking at it, I could have 
made this bigger on the top. I actually had enough material. And had I to do it again, knowing what I know, then yeah, I would have done that. And there's a little bit of extra G.I. Joe stuff. Uh, the modern stuff that's coming out. Mixed into my vintage collection. Here's Tiger Force. I hated Tiger Force when I was a kid. I really hated the Tiger Force when I was a kid. Now, as an adult, I love it because it kind of breaks up the monotony in the military toy line. So it's not all just all this ocean of green. Uh, it, it, it's nice. I like it. So uh, we do have the battle platform here. And yes, behind there is what started the channel. The nine Death Stars uh, in a circle pieced together. And then my homemade version of a PAL toy, which took me a week to do. And that was a that was a rough week. Then I have some other stuff here. I'm storing some boxes and stuff back behind there. Um, but here we go with like a little CD tower and it's adjustable. You just slide in an empty CD case to move them. That's kind of cool. And getting over here, uh, this is where I class show my uh, my bad guy classifieds. And then this is where I put just some other stuff, just make it look good. And down here, this is another project for a Retro Wednesday video. Uh, when I put all those together, I'm going to try to get 10 of them. Now, this whole Cobra section, I moved it. I actually swapped. This was Joe. Now it's Cobra. And so all the backgrounds from Cobra fit in this spot just perfect. And it's it, I think it looks great. So, I mean, that's my opinion. My opinion is it looks great. But uh, other people, be they, they do a lot more crazy decked out stuff than I'm doing. Uh, I'm just doing a real simplified, nice little display. I guess you could say it's nice. Here's a pterodrome and all of those... Uh, all of those uh, claws are gonna, once I get them all completed and put together, they're gonna go on this right here. That's where that's gonna go. And that's where I had them before, but they were missing parts and pieces and some of them broken. And so I'm gonna kind of do a restoration. If anyone's interested in even seeing that, I can videotape it. Uh, I do have, I'm working on a bat army and uh, some other stuff. Let me get some more light on this. And Stormtrooper army over here, the ninja army and a couple of, uh, snake armors and i do have a modern cobra commander i think i'm not sure if that's the one i just yeah that's the one i just reviewed uh not too long ago and a retro wednesday setup i love the pterodrome it's my favorite place and i still like the pterodrome more than the flag and if anyone if there were any reason like hey you could only pick one you have to get rid of one like hey you got to sell one i i would be selling the flag because i would rather keep this but uh the flag's impressive. It, it is a, it's, a, it's an impressive, like, awe, shock and awe when people walk in, that's for sure. Uh, it is a shock and awe when I walk in, but I still like the Terradrome better. I had the Terradrome as a kid, and there's a lot of other stuff. So what am I doing here? There's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, I've got Python Patrol. Uh, get the finger working. Yeah, Python Patrol and the Python Patrol, and those two side by side. And then I've got some stingers and stuff. So really cool, kind of fun right there. Moving back to the back, uh, I wanted to do something a little bit different here. So a couple things going on. I wanted Rattler. Rattler is my favorite by far uh, of the of the airplanes. I like it more than the Sky Striker, and maybe I just like to be bad, you know. So here we are, we're bad, and I wanted one in a takeoff position. This is a plant pot holder that was on clearance for five bucks, and I was like, that looks like something I could put something on, and Sure enough, it fits this perfect. So another thing that I did that I like, I think it's a pretty good option, is to prop up these trouble bubbles in the back. So I was trying a whole lot of different options and different like tubes, like clear tubes, uh, and, and trying to get them looking like they're suspended in the air. I was like, just have them up higher and everything else, it looks good. And I do need to work on, I'll do a little more work to these guys, um, so the fangs. Oh, by the way, I picked up a couple fangs. Uh, those are like $9.95. Uh, retro ones that was pretty cool moving over here i'm starting to work on a a dreadnought section so there's the dreadnought section right here and so it's a lot of fun i like the thunder machine it's pretty cool uh, getting that antenna is really hard and uh getting it where it's not broken and everything's good um steering wheel and all that that was a bit tough but anyway uh that's my joe collection and uh i'm not doing a whole lot with joe other than well, it was a lot of work to, uh, to to get a fly together. So there's an update to my vintage collection. Uh, let me know what you think about it. I'll probably do another one in January of 2022 or something like that. 
really want to know what toy lines that other people are interested in me covering that I have that you've seen in this video. Like I have a lot of videos planned, but some of them get put off because I just don't have enough of the parts and pieces and it's not complete enough to really showcase. And I don't care if I'm missing one or two on some of them, but sometimes it's a bit of a pain to do that. But let me know what you think. Uh, sorry the video ran a bit longer than I thought it would, but it's a whole lot of fun talking about vintage toys. Like, subscribe, put it in here. Out.